Amen, amen, amen. All right, guys, it's time for the word. Get out your Bibles, get out your iPad, get out your notebook, let's go. I believe God has a word for all of us tonight. I'm hungry, I'm excited. I get to do the studying, I get to do the preparing, and then I get so excited for the word. Like I get, I get the spankings, I get the whoopings, I get the ooh, ah, ah, yeah, let's go, let's get it, right? You know, what is 2021? The year of perseverance. The year of perseverance, right? Here at Love Life, we're going to persevere. How are we going to persevere? We're going to persevere together. We're in this together. We are better together. We are stronger together. Those are not just phrases. Those are not just words. That's the attitude here at Love Life. We're a family. We're in this together. We're better together. We're stronger together. And you know, when you're going through the valley, right, you need encouragement. You need somebody to say, you got this. Not you got this. We got this. God's got this. We will overcome. We will have the determination to overcome, right? Because we are love life, and this is our year. This is our year. Every year that we wake up, every day that we wake up, it's our day, it's our year, because our attitude and our outlook is fearless, fearless, right? I'm loving that song. If only I could sing, but that's okay. I don't need to. But we'll have the determination. How many guys ready to wake up every day and have determination? It's a choice. It's not just something that comes over you. Ooh, determination came over me. No, you choose it. You choose it when you wake up to keep your resolutions. This is, a, this is the year we keep our word. We keep our promises. Our yes is our yes is our no is no. Come on. Perseverance, right? To be resilient. No matter what comes our way, we fall down, we get back up. We fall down, we get back up. Oh, my gosh, I tested positive. Fall down, get back up. 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 People... People having some, oh, no, we tested positive. Remodeling their house. I heard somebody built a pergola. It's like, oh, come on, what, what you got? What you got? Let's go. We got this. Right? That's resilience. That's being resilient. That's having the determination, right? Being determined that we're going to persevere whatever comes our way, whatever comes against our family, whatever comes knocking on the door. We will persevere, enduring whatever comes our way. Because what? 2021? is the year of perseverance. It's gonna take some guts, but that's okay. We're fearless, fearless. Okay, I will stop with that song. (laughs) You know what, just because you're struggling, all of us, sometimes, some way, somehow, doesn't mean you're failing. Look at your neighbor and say, just because you're struggling, doesn't mean you're failing. Doesn't mean you're failing. It just means that you need to persevere and you need to discover God's word. You need to discover God's grace. You need to discover God's truth in that area of your life, right? Don't, don't be down for the count. It's just one area of your life that you need to persevere. What does God's word say about this? Persevere through God's truth, through God's love, through God's grace, right? You are a child of God. You're a child of God. When you can just get that understanding that I'm a child of God, no matter what comes my way, I'm a child of God. I can overcome this. I can get through this. We can overcome this. That I am loved by God. You are loved by God. So nothing can separate you from the love of God. You are so loved by God. It was amazing. So um, we have been having a remodel in my house. I know I keep talking about it, but it is what it is, right? And um, the guy that came and he, uh, it, the, he's here, he comes to my house many times. It's been like two months. It's like a two-month period, right? It's a long process. I had no idea. But anyways, it's almost great. <laughs> but the greatest part is that he speaks Spanish and I speak English. But I can speak Spanglish and he could speak whatever the version of English is, Spanglish too. And he would ask me, he just like, who are you guys? Like, what in the world, you know? Are you afraid to die was the, one of the first questions that he started to ask. And I'm like, no, I'm not afraid to die. And anyways, long story short, through many days and different times, I'm talking and he was saying that his heart is good, but his mind is bad. And, you know, that's all of us, right? Do you know for the rest of our life, we're going to be renewing our mind to the word of God? For the rest of our life here on this earth, we're going to have random thoughts. We're going to have crazy thoughts. They come and knock in all the time. When I'm on the freeway, okay, and I love to speed a bit. And then when one of those trailers is in front of me that you could just, like, it's like a ramp. Every time I see one of those, no joke, I want to hit the pedal to the metal. And, 
and just like, but this ain't cars. I'm not the movie. This ain't the show. I am not Lightning McQueen, right? It's not going to just fly over. That happens. Sometimes when I'm driving randomly, if a car's going slow, I want to play bumper cars. But boom, wouldn't that be so fun? No, it wouldn't. That's a dumb thought. I take that thought and I say, hey, thought, you got to go somewhere else. When are you trying to crash? No, I never got time for that. I don't want to deal with insurance. I ain't trying to get a new car. No. But random thoughts will always come for the rest of our life here on this earth. So just so we're clear, right? They'll come, but it's what we do with them. It's if we take them, meditate on them, and produce them in our life, or we take them captive and we replace them with God's word. Those are the options. Those are the choices, right? So I'm sharing that with him, with my Spanglish, and I, I say, Dios es amo siempre. Like, because he's like, I have many questions. And I said, the answer to all of your questions is God is love always. And he was like, oh, man. It was so powerful. God is love. When you have a question, God is love. God is love. Because we, we, we don't have all understanding. We don't know it all. But what we do know, the foundation of our life, is that God is love. And that nothing will ever separate us from the love of God. Because we're a child of God. He is love. We are more than conquerors in Christ Jesus. Jesus already whooped on the devil, stole all his power, stole all his authority. All authority has been given to Jesus, and we are in Christ Jesus. That authority is given to us, but the devil is a liar, and he tells us that I still have the authority. And we're like, do you? Ooh. You do? Ooh. You know why? Because you've been watching too many of them stupid um, spooky movies, whatever they're called, like horror movies, and you're like, ooh, the devil, ooh, and you're like, ooh, something moved in, the, in, something moved in your room, you're like, ooh, and you have like 20 movies flashing through your mind. Put down Netflix, put down those scary movies, right? You're wondering what, you're, because it's inputting thoughts, right, images into your mind, so your mind immediately hears something, you go to that. You go to that, you go to that, right? because that's what you're sowing. That's what you're sowing in your mind. That's what you're planting, right? And then you're reaping a harvest of that. Man, why am I reaping a harvest of this in my life? What are you sowing in your life, right? What are you planting? What are those seeds being sown? But we need to plant the word of God in our life, that we are a child of God, that God loves me, that nothing can separate me from the love of God, that I'm more than a conqueror in Christ Jesus, right? That I already have the victory. I don't need the victory. Jesus, give me the victory. He's like, you already have it. You've been given all authority. You already have the victory in Christ Jesus. Uh, it's growing in our understanding of who Jesus is. What did Pastor Dan say for this year? Go through the Gospels. Go through the Gospels. Go through the Gospels. Go through the Gospels. What's the Gospels? The Gospel means good news. Jesus is the good news. He is, he was, and always will be the good news. So we look to Jesus, how he reacted, how he responded. Man, Jesus is like a boss. When I see him, it says, it says he was sitting there. He walks out, multitudes out there. He sits on the, he goes to the boat. He sits and he preaches. I'm like, oh my gosh. Um, I mean, just picture it. We just read the Bible. But picture him walking out of the house, multitudes. Okay, we think crowds are like, imagine multitudes at your door saying, can you tell me about Jesus? He's like, I am him. <laughs> I am. That's what he said. When he says, I am, oh, I just love it, right? But we need to grow in who Jesus is, right? We need to grow in grace. We need to grow in love. We need to grow in truth. We need to grow in the understanding of these things. How? Through the revelation knowledge of Jesus Christ as our Lord and Savior. Through the understanding of Jesus Christ as our Lord and Savior. We need to get these understandings. What does that mean? That's why we come to church. That's why we show up to grow up, right? That's why we write down notes and we, a word goes out and that word impacts you. You write it down. You write down that scripture so that you can go over it later. So that you can hear it again and again and again. Like I tell you guys all the time. I have been here 23. It's going to be 24 years. I know. I'm not that old. <laughs> I'm getting there. But anyways, anyways, <laughs> guys, that was a joke, okay? <laughs> um, but 
just from hearing the word, hearing the word, hearing the word, we would have cassettes. And these little cassettes, you put them in your little boom box or you put it in the car. I would listen to the services on repeat until the cassette would break. I would, I would say Pastor Dan's joke before he said it and I would start cracking up laughing. I would be like saying the new creation scriptures and I was just like, it's because everything in the world was opposite of everything that I was hearing in here. And I wanted more of the word. I wanted more of truth. I wanted to discover who I really was. I was over the world, what the world said I was. I was over the labels. I was over what my parents said, what my teacher said, what my friends said. I wanted to know what God said. And I could only know what God said in his word. I could only know. And when I read the word at that age, it didn't make any sense to me. When I read the word, it was like, it, I don't know. It just, I couldn't understand it. But when I came to church and I heard Pastor Dan, I could understand what he said. I was like, okay, I could do that. I could hear that. Amen to that. Let's go. Preach, preacher. And, and you'll still see me in the front row. Preach. That's me. <laughs> one time I was in the back with the youth and um, one, uh, one of our, a lady here, she was home watching and she sent me a text and she's like, I don't hear you in the service. And I'm like, so confused. I'm like, aren't you home? And I called her after the service and I'm like, I was confused by the text. She's like, in the service on the live stream, I can always hear you. Amen. Preach, Pastor. Let's go. Yeah. She's like, where are you? I can't hear you. <laughs> and I was preaching in the youth ministry. I'm like, is my mic on really loud? That they're, I was just so confused. It was just funny. But when I come, I come to receive something. When I come, I know that God has a word for me. When I come, I know I come expected and I want to pull on that gift. I want to receive everything that God has for me. So I come with a great heart, with good ground, being attentive, ready to receive, right? And this is, this is why we need to grow in the understanding of who Jesus is and who we are in him. That gives us the authority. That gives us the power. Then we get to walk with the authority of who we are. Never stop growing. Growing, never stop discovering who Jesus truly is. Keep on persevering. Keep on discovering, right? And who you are in him. And never stop being hungry to understand that nothing can separate you from the love of God. When you become so fearless, you become so bold, you become so brave when you realize that nothing, no one can ever separate you from the love of God. It doesn't matter what you do. It doesn't matter choices you make. Nothing will ever separate you from the love of God. And having that settled in your heart, it makes you so fearless, fearless. Okay, I said I was going to start with the song, but totally feeling it, right? His truth. You need to understand his truth. Not just what the world's saying, not just what the news is saying, not just what this generation's saying, because the truth in the generation is always changing. What was okay for my parents was not okay for us, and what was okay for us is not okay for this generation. It just gets, honestly, it gets worse and worse and worse. Kids be pushing the boundaries more and more and more. And now with social media and, and everything is just like, it's just happening even at a more rapid pace, right? Everything's happening at a more rapid pace. But his truth, Jesus, Jesus' truth sets you free. Jesus said in John 8, 31, Jesus said to the people who believed in him, you are truly my disciples if you remain faithful, loyal, devoted to my teachings. And you will know, understand, persevere, and have knowledge of the truth. And the application of that truth that will set you free. People will be talking about, I'm woke. Yeah, truth set you free, set you free, set you free. From what? From what? No, it says, when you remain faithful, when you remain faithful to what? To the teachings of Jesus, to the words of Jesus. When will you know the truth? When will you be set free? Come on. When you remain, when you persevere, when you are loyal, when you are devoted to what? to the teachings of Jesus. That's why we need to read the Gospels. That's why we need to see what Jesus did. We need to picture it. We need to watch it. We need to experience it. I know the voice of Jesus because I see him in the word, right? I see him. I can experience him through the word. We have a Bible, right? The devil comes or our crazy thoughts can come too, right? With what? With our past, with failures, 
with guilt, with shame, with pain. The devil comes to, to accuse us. It's like the devil comes to tell us and remind us. But you know what? We need to speak the word. We need to speak the word. When the devil comes, when those thoughts come and they come against you and they remind you of your past, they remind you of your failures, they remind you of the different pains, they remind you of sickness, they remind you of disease, remind you you're not worthy, you're never going to be good enough, you can't, you won't, you never will, you always lose. What do you need to do? Ooh, he's right. No. That's, that's that thought that randomly comes in that I'm just going to run over that ramp. No. I take that thought and I say, no, you got to get out of here. I ain't gonna, and nobody got time to run over the ramp, you know? Maybe if I had like a special suit on and a special car and a special ramp. I wonder if we could do ramps in heaven, God, because that would be awesome. But anyways. But what do you need to speak? We need to speak the word. We need to speak the word to those thoughts. We need to speak the word to the enemy when he tries to persuade us, right? We remind the enemy and we remind ourselves, what does the word say? What did Jesus say, right? And nothing can separate me from the love of God. No guilt, no shame, no condemnation. You can keep on talking, devil, but I ain't a listening. Keep on, go for it. Talk to yourself, right? Talk to the hand because the, I don't remember, something like that. Just let the devil know. You can keep on talking, but you're talking to yourself. And you know what? You're a liar, okay? Keep on lying because you're lying to yourself, right? The truth has set me free. The truth has set you free. And the application of the words of Jesus set us free. We need to apply the word. We hear the word. We apply the word. We, that's what sets us apart. That's what gives us great success. When we hear the word and we apply the word, right? Every parent in the house, when you tell your kid to do something, it's not till they do it. It's not till the application, right? When you're learning something, you can, you can hear, hear, hear. But it's not till you apply it. And then when you can teach it to somebody else, you truly have understanding. When you can teach what you know and give it and pass it on, you truly have understanding of who you are and what you are and what the word says, right? The application of the words of Jesus sets us free. Free from what? Free from guilt. Free from shame. Free from our past, free from condemnation, free from anxiety. Anybody y'all ready to break up with anxiety? You ready to break up with depression? You're over it, let's go. What do you need to speak? Speak the word. We need to speak the word, right? Because the word sets us free, free from fear. We will not walk in fear. For God has not given us a spirit of fear, but he's given us power, love, and a sound mind, a well-disciplined mind. Our thoughts aren't all over the place. No, we have self-control. We have a well-disciplined mind. It's given to you, but we need to apply it. We need to grow in understanding, persevere, to know, to understand, to walk in it, right? To walk in the word. Fear has no place in here, right? This is what, this is why the enemy works so hard to keep us stupid. He works so hard to keep us ignorant. He works so hard to keep you distracted when the word is going forth. Why? Because he doesn't want you to get the word. He doesn't want you to get understanding. He doesn't want you to get that revelation knowledge. He doesn't want you to get to that rhema, that spoken word that comes alive in you. He doesn't want to get you. He's like, no, no, no. He's got you. Oh, aren't you hungry? He's got, aren't you hungry? Thinking about Taco Bell. Did they have a sale? I think I saw a commercial. I think, oh, did she get a new hair? I'm not sure. Does she looks different. Well, I like those shoes. Distracted. Just like that. All of you guys are all distracted right now, right? Reel it back in. Reel it back in. Why? Because he wants to keep you ignorant. Ignorant of truth. He wants to keep you, he wants to keep you bound when you've been set free, right? Ignorant from truth to keep you under bondage, right? When you're free. You are free. Whom the sun sets free is free indeed, right? We're no longer slaves to sin. Look at your neighbor and say, I'm no longer a slave to sin. No longer. We are no longer ignorant of the devil's devices. We're no longer ignorant of his lies and his schemes because he's a liar, right? He's got tricks and tricks are for kids. And we're growing up here at Love Life, right? I haven't had tricks in a long time. I, it's been, I don't, never mind, I'll roll it in. Growing up, we were not allowed to drink, eat cereal that had sugar. Like growing up, we had oatmeal with honey. Like growing up, we had cream of wheat. Does anybody remember something called cream of wheat? Like, man, it was bomb. 
with sugar, but we were only allowed to have it with honey. It was like, so when you went to school, we were on the free lunch program, and then they had a donut, they had chocolate milk, and then they had like some sugary cereal, or they had like, uh, what did we get to choose? Like, cheer, egg, uh, piece of bread, or like Cheerios or something. I would be like, obey mom, disobey mom, obey mom, disobey mom. Donut it is! Woo! <laughs> The next day, obey mom, disobey mom. Cheerios it is. Obey mom, disobey mom. Oh, they used to have this kind of pancake with a little sausage in the middle to look like a corn dog. That was bomb too. And I don't think we were allowed to eat that either. (laughs) Sorry, mom. (laughs) But tricks are for kids and we're no longer falling for those tricks. We're going to do what mom says and we're going to obey right away, right? (laughs) Because (laughs) love sets us free. The truth sets us free, right? We're no longer going back to slavery. We're no longer going back to sin. And we're no longer going back to religion. We're not going, we're not under that bondage. We are free. We are set free, right? The truth sets us free. Free to what? Free to live life. Free to love this life. How many of you guys ready to love your life? Not your virtual life, not your virtual edited image of yourself out there on the, on the web, not your Instagram version, not your Facebook, your snappity chat, your tickety talk, not that version of you, but the real you. How many of you guys ready to love your real life? When you wake up in the morning, you feel good about yourself. You have a responsibility, accountability, determination to take on that day. Like, let's go. Let's do this. Like, how is that? Through God's love through God's word, through God's truth. That's how we're going to, free to love life, free to live life, and also free to give others this life. People are going to look and say, how are you so free? Let me tell you, his name is Jesus. Jesus has rewritten my life. He's rewritten my whole life. And now when I look back at the past, I can see his grace all over me. I can see his grace all over me. I used to think, man, when I look back, there is a mess. Man, when I look back there, I say, no, Jesus was knocking on my door all the way. He was calling me home. He was giving me that grace. But I had to choose him for myself. And you have to choose him for yourself, right? Jesus said in John 10, 10, the thief comes only in order to steal, kill, and destroy. I came. Why did Jesus come? That they may have and enjoy life. Not that you would be depressed. Not that you'd be anxious. Not that you'd have panic attacks. Not that you'd be worried and have pressure and you'd have anxiety. Why did Jesus come? So that we could have and enjoy life and have it in abundance until it overflows. How many of you are so, so ready to wake up full of life? You're so ready to wake up that your life overflows and you're like, whoa, I'm such a morning person. When I wake up, Bible's on, music's on, light's on, workout's in, let's go. But when it's nighttime, I'm passed out. <laughs> when it gets dark outside, I'm like, oh, dark is for sleepy. <laughs> I cannot hang at night. I mean, I'm getting better, a little bit better, but I need my eight hours, okay? Your girl likes to wake up at 4.45. Just... But I'm a morning person, right? I, I feel like I can say that because it's easy for me. I wake up like, whoo, let's go. Why? But I'm receiving the promise of walking full of life until it overflows. Until it overflows. I want it to overflow into the whole house, right? Because <laughs> we're all morning people in my house. Not, that's a lie. That's, that's a big fat lie. <laughs> we're working on it. I, I've learned, though, like when you see, when I see my sisters in the morning, don't speak. I could have my music, I could have whatever, but don't speak until you're spoken to. <laughs> it's like you go out to get water or whatever, it's like. I shut the door and I'm like, Jesus, Phyllis. But if they say like, good morning, I'm like, hey, good morning, how'd you sleep? How was it? Did you, oh, you, you, you slept good? Okay. Da, 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 da. What time did you guys go to bed? What were you guys watching? Sound like you were having a great time out there. They're like, ah. And I come out, I'm like, what, what was it? They're like, nothing. You won't think it's funny. <laughs> because every time they're watching something, and they're like, ah! And I wake up out of bed, I'm like, what was it? And then I'm like, that wasn't funny. That wasn't funny. So now when I'm like, what was it? They're like, you won't think it's funny. Go back to bed. And I just trust them at their word. Peace. <laughs> 
I'm out. <laughs> Jesus came to give us our best life. How many of you guys ready to walk in that word, walk in that promise, right? A new life in him. When you understand the new you, you can finally overcome the past you. When you understand the new you in Christ Jesus, you finally get free from the past you. It doesn't matter what happens in this life, persevere. It doesn't matter what comes your way, persevere. It doesn't matter what you're going through, persevere. Persevere, persevere. You already have the victory in Christ Jesus. All this new life in Jesus only equals opportunity for change. Oh, yeah, I said it. It doesn't equal change. It equals opportunity for change, right? We all have been given an opportunity to choose Jesus. We've all been given an opportunity to choose life. Every day that we wake up, we get an opportunity to choose love. We get an opportunity to choose wisdom or stupidity. I'm not kidding. It is so obvious. It's so blunt. It's so out in front. You get two choices, life, death, blessing, cursing, Stupidity or wisdom. Choose life. Choose blessing. Choose wisdom. Choose love. Choose life, right? Choose freedom or bondage. Do you know that you've been set free and you go back under bondage to what? What, what addictions are out there? It's crazy how this generation, old, young, 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 like young, young. I'm talking like two-year-olds got a phone. I'm like, what in the world? They just like... They know, they know more than me, right? But what are we setting them example to? To be addicted to this? I want to be addicted to the word. I want to be addicted to the love of Jesus. I want to be addicted to the house of God. I want to be addicted to worshiping God. I was created to love you. Yeah, I want to, that's what I want my addictions to be. To the love of God, to the grace of God, to the forgiveness of God. Waking up passionate and excited about a generation that we are the hope. We will not lose hope. We will not give up. We will not give in. It doesn't matter what the world says. It doesn't matter what the times say. It doesn't matter what the government says. It doesn't matter what everybody says. You have to do what you have to do. You have to be like, us and if you don't man if you don't have a phone are you even of the times like how do you survive do you know how many people survive without a phone I survived without internet had a great life had a great childhood we went outside we played we rode bikes we rode rollerblades we slapped high fives we knew every neighborhood kid we knew their name we, when the street lights turned off you got your butt home and you ate dinner and you went to bed started the day over <laughs> when we survived we thrived it's time to bring the old school things back. Come on. These kids like, oh, I got a sunburn. What is that? When I was growing up, I thought I was real, real dark. I, I promise you, I thought I was dark, dark. And then when I got older, I'm like, man, what happened? It's like, oh, I haven't been outside. Who knew? The sun will do that to you. I was soaking up that vitamin D. Come on, my immune system was rocking. These germs come at you. You don't care, you ate dirt. We of the dirt, bring it on. Like literally. <laughs> Anyways, I won't uncover that I may have tasted dirt as a kid. And I also tasted the little grass with the little weed on it that had a little, watch out, rewind that, take it back. Y'all know what I meant. Real grass, a real little weed. Oh, Lord Jesus. What will you choose? <laughs> choose Jesus. <laughs> what will you choose? Change isn't changed until it's what? Changed, right? You have to make change to have change. It's time to make some change in our lives. It's time to make some change in our daily lives, our daily choices, right? Here at Love Life, we don't just hear the word. We apply the word to our what? To our everyday life. We apply the word to our family life. We apply the word to our relationships. We apply the word to our finances. We apply the word to how we think and how we act and how we react, how we respond, right? And we exercise our faith in God's word. We exercise, we put it to work, we put it to action. Every time you hear the word, Every time you come to church, you hear the word. Every time you're on YouTube, you're watching the read broadcast, you hear the word. Jesus tells us that you get four options. Woo, my notes disappeared. This is not a joke. <laughs> okay, thank the Lord. We covered that. Thank you, Jesus, for this iPad I give you. <laughs> Thanks. <laughs> I was talking all that trash about the iPhones and the iPads. <laughs> Woo, I need it for the word, though, Lord. <laughs> 
<laughs> that screen time is for the word. <laughs> All right, here at Love Life, right, we apply the word, we exercise the word. Okay, so Jesus tells us that we get four options, okay? Every time we hear the word, our heart, our ground, we get four options. Combo number one, combo number two, combo number three, combo number four. You all ready? We choose the condition of our heart. We choose our ground. Option number one is that the word goes out and it goes to the wayside. Here's combo number two is stony ground. Option number three is thorny ground, and option number four is good ground. You choose. Okay, Jesus tells us in Matthew 13, 1 through 9, on the same day Jesus went out of the house and sat by the sea. Like that part, I just love. Jesus went out of the house, he sat by the sea. Like just picturing him, watching him. Otherwise, you could just lose that. A great multitude were gathered together to him so that he got into the boat, he sat, and the whole multitude stood on the shores. Then he spoke many things to them in parables. He spoke many things to them in examples. He spoke many things into them in stories so that they could understand, saying, here's option, combo number one. Behold, a sower went out to sow, and he sowed some, and as he sowed, some fell by the wayside, and the birds came and devoured them. The seed goes out, the word goes out, and it goes by the wayside, right? If you're distracted or whatever, thinking about things, worries, cares. Option number two, some fell on stony places where they did not have much earth, and they immediately sprang up because they had no depth of earth. But when the sun was up, they were scorched, and because they had no root within them, it withered away. Option number three, some fell among thorns, and the thorns sprang up and choked them. But the others fell, option number four, this is us, okay? Here at Love Life, we pick combo number four every time we receive the word, okay? But others fell on good ground and yielded a crop, some a hundredfold, some 60, some 30. He who has ears to hear, let him hear. He's like, listen up, listen up, listen up, right? Here's it broken down in the message, Matthew 13, 18. In the message Bible, combo number one, when the seed fell by the wayside, ready? When anyone hears the news of the kingdom and doesn't take it in, it remains on the surface, so the evil one comes along, plucks it right out of that person's heart, and the seed the farmer scattered is on the road by the wayside. Can you picture yourself in each of these? You came in, the word went forth, and you don't even know what happened. It came, it went, right? But you get to choose the condition of your heart. It doesn't just magically happen. You prepare your heart. You choose the condition of your heart. This is why we need to know the word so that we know that we even have an option, that we get to pick a combo number, okay? Combo number two, when the seed fell on stony ground, that's the seed cast in the gravel. This is the person who hears instantly, responds with enthusiasm, but there is no soil of character. So when the emotions wear off and some difficulties arrive, there is nothing to show for it. So you hear the word, it impacts you, you're excited about it, but you can't persevere, right? A little struggle comes your way, you're like, oh, God doesn't, God doesn't heal. It doesn't work for me. It's not true, right? Because just a little resistance, just a little, you got to persevere, you got to persevere. you got to get those rocks out of the ground, right? We have these options to choose. This is just Jesus on the boat talking to the people. He's sitting back. He's talking to the people. He's got his little amplifier. It's called the ocean. <laughs> All right. Comment number three. When the seed fell on thorny ground, the seed cast in the weeds is the person who hears the kingdom news, but the weeds of worry and illusion about getting more, wanting everything under the sun, strangles what was heard, and nothing comes of it. This thorny ground, this is this generation. We're so filled with illusions and delusions that everybody else got it better, that her Instagram page is better, and their life is better, and they have a better job, and they have a better marriage, and they have better kids, and we need this, and I need that, and I need a better car, and I need a better house, and we need a bigger place, and my kids need this. This is like, there's so much pressure. Why? Because of the illusion and delusion of a screen of an edited, filtered version of somebody else's life that you don't even know them. You don't even know them. There's the, the worry and the illusion, and it's stealing 
the word from your life. It's stealing the word from your relationships. It's stealing the words from your children. It's stealing the word from your legacy, your calling, your purpose. Why? The illusions and delusions of worry. Get it out. Get it out. This is us. This is what we choose. Combo number four. Every time we hear the word, this is where we prepare our hearts. When the, when the seed fell on good ground, say, I'm good ground. Every time I hear the word, I'm good ground. Every time I come to hear the word, I prepare my heart as good ground, ready to receive. If I'm preaching the word, I came to hear the word. I came to receive the word. My heart's prepared as good ground. I receive whatever the Holy Spirit's got for me. Let's go. I'm ready to grow. I'm ready to change. I'm ready to persevere, whatever comes my way. The seed cast on good ground is the person who hears and takes in the word. Y'all ready to hear and take in the word and then produces a harvest beyond his or her wildest dream. How, how many of you guys ready to pr- produce a harvest beyond your wildest dream? Beyond your wildest dream. Remember Jesus said in John 8, 31, he said, Jesus said to the people who believed in him, you are truly my disciples if you remain faithful, loyal, devoted to my teachings, and you will know the truth. You will perceive the truth. You will understand the truth. And that truth will set you free. Set you free, set you free, set you free. When will we know the truth? When will we be set free? When will we produce this harvest beyond our wildest dreams? When we remain. When we persevere. When we are loyal. When we are devoted. To what? To the teachings of Jesus. To the words of Jesus. Followers of Jesus, right? Which ground are you today? You have to ask yourself. You have to prepare your heart. Am I the wayside? Am I stony ground? Am I thorny ground? Am I good ground? Right? And you know what? In different st- in life, we have stages, we have seasons, we have bad days, right? But every day that you wake up, you can prepare your heart to be good ground, to receive all that God has for you, right? We have to make this choice every single day. Do you believe in God's word or not? You gotta, you gotta ask yourself that question. Do I believe in God's word or not? Do I believe and trust God's timing or not? When I wake up, I know the things that I need to get done. I know the things that I need. Do I trust God's timing or not? Do I trust his word or not? Because I will persevere because I do trust God completely. There is no need to worry, right? Let's take responsibility of the condition of our heart. It's not your neighbor's responsibility. It's not your spouse's responsibility. It's not your parents' responsibility. It's not my responsibility. It's not pastor's responsibility. It's your responsibility. The condition of your heart is your responsibility. Guard your heart. Proverbs 4.23. Guard, military guard, and garden. Double guard your heart above all else. For it, what? Your heart, your ground, the seed that goes forth, it determines the course of your life. It determines the course of your life. Stop emotionally guarding your heart and start gardening your heart. Double guard your heart for it determines the course of your life. Gardening our heart and preparing it to be good ground, to receive the word, to receive what God has for us, right? Every time we hear the word here at Love Life, we hear the word, we accept the word, we apply the word, and we multiply the word. Jesus said in Mark 4, 20, but these are the ones sown on good ground. Those who hear the word, accept the word, and bear fruit. Some 30-fold, some 60, and some 100-fold. We hear the word. We accept the word. We apply the word. We multiply the word. How many of y'all ready to multiply the word? Multiply the word. Some 30, some 60, some 100 fold. It's up to you. You choose. It's not like, man, why are they so successful? Man, why is their life so great? They chose to hear the word, accept the word, apply the word, and multiply that word in their life, right? All this new life equals opportunity for change. The word goes out, the seed goes out. It's opportunity for change. It's opportunity for you to receive the word, hear the word, apply the word, receive the word, multiply that word. Opportunity for you to choose Jesus. Opportunity for you to choose life. The word goes out. It's opportunity for you to choose that life. Opportunity for you to choose love. Opportunity for you to choose wisdom. Opportunity for you to choose freedom and never look back. God loves you so much, he gave you a free will to choose. He won't make you. 
I wish you would. God, make me, make me. The choice is yours. True love always has a choice. There's always a choice. He loves you so much that he gives you the freedom to choose for yourself. You get to choose him or you choose the world. You choose salvation or you choose rejection. You choose. Every decision, every action is a seed sown. Right? Do you want a new life? Plant a new seed. Just as simple as that. You want a new life? Plant a new seed, producing a harvest beyond, beyond your wildest dreams. Paul said in Galatians 6, 7, this is the voice version, make no mistake, God can't be mocked. What you give is what you get. What you sow, you harvest. Those who sow seeds into their flesh will only harvest destruction from their sinful nature. But those who sow seed into the spirit shall harvest everlasting life from the spirit. May we never tire of doing what is good, of doing what is right before our Lord, because in his season, in due season, we shall reap a great harvest if we can just persevere. If we can persevere. So seize any opportunity that the Lord gives you to do good. Be a blessing to everyone, especially those within our faithful family. Choose Jesus tonight. Choose to plant the word, to plant the seed, to receive a harvest tonight. And when you wake up, choose again. And tomorrow, choose again. And when all hell breaks loose, choose again. And when you're on the mountain, choose again. And when you're in the valley, choose again. When you're healed and whole, choose again. When you're dealing with sickness and disease, choose again. When all's going crazy in your relationship, choose again. When all's going crazy with your kids and your finances, choose again. When all's going great in blessings and multiplication, choose again. Choose Jesus. Choose life. Choose love. Choose wisdom. Choose freedom. Because he already chose you. He already chose you. And if you would like to choose Jesus tonight, and if you've never asked Jesus in your heart, and you'd like to join the family of God, I would love to pray with you. I would love to pray with you. Let's pray together, calling on the name of Jesus, asking to receive him, and you enter into the family of God. Let's pray together. Say, Jesus, I believe in you. Jesus, I ask you to save me and set me free. Thank you, Jesus, for this new life. I receive all that you have for me, all your plans, all your purpose. I receive it all. Thank you, Jesus, for this new life. In Jesus' name I pray, amen, amen, amen.